just an intellectual framework is up to you. But what is my framework? Journalism, what are the functions of journalism or the purposes of journalism? First, a credible information function. People recognize it. Was it what is credibility? Hard to define, but people recognize it when they encounter it, one. But that's not enough. The second function is a critical function, uh, an analytical function, an investigative function, a questioning function. You don't accept people's statements at face value. So a critical investigative function, sometimes we claim to be watchdogs for the public interest, but that's what it is. It goes beyond reporting. It, it is analytical, it provides commentary, it provides opinion, different opinions and so on. If you do these two central functions well, you come to byproducts or derivatives. One is the first derivative would be the, an agency in public education. You seek to educate the public, not talk down to them, but give them information, insights, knowledge, or introduce them to knowledge on issues like science and technology, economics, current affairs and politics, sports, art and culture, you know, you name it, entertainment, the whole world, film, cinema, I mean cinema, theater and all that, uh, or a rounded approach to what's going on around you. Uh, that's the function of the, the agency of public education. So then, uh, a forum for comment, disputation, and so on, where different views uh, contend with each other, collide, and then something comes out of it. The idea that truth comes out of all this is now in dispute. Philosophers have disputed the idea that you need diversity to get to the truth. That's, uh, that's the old uh, Milton approach to free speech. It's been questioned. But it's a good thing to have diversity in any case. And uh, Arthur Miller, the American playwright, is quoted as saying, a good newspaper is like a nation talking to itself. That idea, very, very idealistic view of uh, this uh, being a forum. And then you come to what you call agenda, I wouldn't say agenda setting, which would be a tall claim, but agenda building. Agenda building, you participate with others in building a worthwhile, a virtuous agenda, a progressive agenda, a just agenda, an agenda that is very relevant to here and now, whether it's to the community in a small, with a small media, the small newspaper, or a community radio, or uh, whether it's the, the country as la uh, large or indeed uh, beyond that. So these are the functions, but what are the others? One is an entertainment function, pastime function. The, the newspapers must give space to that. The media must give time and space to that. But you also come to the, what textbooks do not often emphasize, the propaganda function of journalism. The propaganda model, manufacturing consent, you must recognize, liberal, liberal approaches won't do to this. I think you need a much more radical look at what journalism is, because liberalism doesn't help in this area, because as uh, Chomsky and Herman point out, as Walter Lippmann pointed out a long time ago, uh, you know, the, the, the institutional arrangements we have in so-called liberal democracies for the policies of the government of the day, you see the opposition gets relatively little space. On some TV channels, not at all. Newspapers may be a little better, but even they're heavily tilted towards uh, government policies. The propaganda function is very strong. You saw what happens to in ABP News, that somebody does an investigation of a prime minister's statement. Uh, the, the, the person had to, was, uh, had to resign. His boss had to resign. Another journalist was suspended for doing programs. And this channel even uh, blocked its own messages on, uh, on, uh, on satellite television, direct to home television. Uh, and the Cobra Post investigation also showed the depths to which uh, major media organizations could uh, go uh, when they were offered un money under the table cash for doing propaganda for, uh, for the Saffron Brigade, communal messages defaming the opposition, it, it was all on video, uh, and so on. So this is there, but both sides can do propaganda. And the reason I think the government is very worried about WhatsApp is it can, before the election, it could be very potent before the election that is due in, by April, May of 2019, 
But both sides and many sides can play this game. They can also put out fake news about uh, the Modi government, the kind of, what they've been doing, that they control. They can do exactly, you know, and they are gearing up. Some of the opposition parties are now gearing up to hit back through WhatsApp and these messaging platforms and social media uh, on, uh, against the propaganda that is coming from the other camp. And this, I think, uh, creates great turbulence, creates great polarization in society and in politics, and tremendous confusion, especially for those who are in school and colleges, and all of us too, but, but those who look with, uh, you know, to a bright future, they, they get completely confused. No, I think that the, the run-up to this election, 2019 election, is going to be pretty dirty. It's going to be played out uh, in all these for forums, and not just as you're saying the ruling party, but the opposition party is also getting their act together. And everybody's going to be having fee for all and lots of fake news. And then, how what becomes the role of a professional journalist in this or news media? Or how do we keep tabs that all these sites play clean, or the voter gets to choose what they want? I mean, how do we sort of what is our role? Is this third party upholding democracy and making sure that they play a clean game and we can get an election which, you know, which is clean? In some way. Yeah, just give me a minute. My friend Alan Rusbridger, former um, editor of The Guardian, who, who now heads an Oxford college, uh, Lady Margaret Hall, has come out with a new book, which I think is really, I've been reading it. Uh, and, and it's available in the Kindle edition as well. Breaking news, the remaking of journalism and why it matters now. And he really makes a very strong case for, uh, for you know, he, he, it fully recognizes what we were talking about, the threat, and it paints quite a dark picture of what's happened, but uh, his main point is that you need to define the purposes of journalism and uh, reclaim some space for it in a very challenging and difficult situation. Uh, because they, I mean, they face digital disruption much more than India has. But this book, uh, Breaking News, the remaking of journalism and why it matters now, just come out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, you, you, which argues for, uh, for rescuing truth from this co extremely confused mass of information. This, uh, what he calls this ocean, this uh, churning ocean of, seething ocean of uh, information, where it's almost impossible to, uh, for lay people to uh, separate. And what, this, uh, what Facebook and, uh, uh, particularly Facebook has done, WhatsApp and so on, is to, uh, is to uh, amplify the negative messages. Because they, they're they found that the best way to, uh, to capture attention is to, uh, is to do is to is to put out negative messages. Others put it out to amplify it, to, because this is what appeals to people's emotions, and that's the, the business model is based on it. And there's a lot of writing on it. How Mark Zuckerberg understood psychology, the work, you know, from the work done by propagandists everywhere, and also the gambling industry, how it, how it creates addiction, and so on. And this, I think. It makes it very, very difficult to, uh, to rescue truth from the mass out there. Truth, first you've got to define it. Uh, it's a philosophical question, but truth as we recognize it. Factual, uh, in context, with background, which we seek to do. The truth-telling function, if you like, of, uh, of journalism and all, non, non, on, on all writing, fiction or non-fiction. Okay, I, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to open the floor for questions and please ask, so raise your hands. Okay. I'm, I'm from Chennai. From the last few statements you made, you appear to have this notion where journalists are the gatekeepers of truth. Don't you feel that social media democratizes uh, truth to an extent? Everyone gets to say what they think that is. No. I, I, don't, I don't think journalists are the gatekeepers of truth. Journalists are one, one uh, vehicle, one instrument, one route, not journalists, journalism, um, of, uh, of getting credible information. 
and, and some critical insights, analysis, not all generated by journalists but by various others, with a certain professionalism, which is what uh, Samira has been talking about, all uh, uh, emphasizing now, with a certain professionalism that uh, makes us or makes journalism in the sense, journalism at its best, uh, a better source than most of the sources out there. Of course, journalists, to be journalistic is to be superficial. There's another sense. I heard uh, Ranjit use that this morning. Yeah. Uh, journalistic. Yeah, it's true. Journalism has a reputation for superficiality and dilettantism. There is that. But, uh, you know, as a general newspapers, for example, or good TV channels, the BBC is a good example for all the criticism it's got. Uh, they, they are a better source, better way of uh, learning about what's going around, whether it's in your community or the country at large or globally, than most of many other sources or most other sources. What is out there? Fake news magnified a million times on Facebook is not that. Of course, there is good, there's good messaging out there, there's solidarity, but I don't buy for a moment this uh, argument that uh, democratizing, uh, democratizing the distribution of information is, uh, uh, is always uh, leads to desirable results. Uh, the, the opposite is being seen and in fact possibly there's even a demonization of the social media in much of the literature we read, which we don't need. But I think you've got to strike that balance. But right now, uh, what dominates our perceptions and what we are living through is the theme that uh, it's increasingly difficult for people to distinguish between fake news and real news uh, there. And in fact, people are now even questioning where democracies are. There's an article in The Economist just come out uh, where uh, they quote uh, an Oxford uh, Cambridge professor who says democracy, end of democracy and all that. I, I'm not getting into that, but democracy by itself whether it's Modi's India or Malaysia or, the, or in Turkey, the idea that autocracy is now, uh, you know, democracy also, uh, or they talk about Putin uh, in Russia, uh, democracy is, uh, doesn't produce the results that uh, you always uh, expect it to do. That's a different issue, but uh, so just, be, just labeling it democratic is not good enough. You have to show uh, that it is, it, 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 there's a benefit out there in what the social media do. Uh, there are benefits, but there are huge negative effects, toxic effects that uh, not just journalists are talking about, everyone is talking about it. Fake news, regulate fake news. Uh, the government wants to do it. Uh, you must have read Trump, Trump's attack on, on uh, all the, ma all the major newspapers, the failing New York Times, uh, the, you know, fake news. No, but he's all the he's time. actually calling real investigative reporting fake news. Now, what do you do about that? Uh, he's calling actual good reporting by New York Times fake news. And the real fake news is not called fake news. And in India, ministers are calling the press, uh, journalists prostitutes, including Mr. Singh. <laughs> good evening, sir. This is Vimal from uh, Jaipur Book Lovers Club. Actually, uh, what I see is from one, on one side, there is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all these social networking sites. On the another side, there is government. So in one side, we talk about this is our privacy, which is in hand of these social networking sites. If government tries to control that this privacy should be maintained, it should not be sold in the market as it is being done currently. Like Google, if you are offline, even then Google tracks where are you, what you are doing, what you are purchasing, everything. Similarly, Facebook is also taking your information and selling it in the market. And there are other networking sites. If we want our government to control it, that our information should not be sold, then the government is there which is actually using that information for its own purpose. Like uh, Cambridge Analytica, you already told about this. And then on one side, as a user we are here, opposite to our side, there are different groups like ISIS, who has, uh, which has used these social networking sites for recruitment. Now, as a sim sim uh, simple user, 
what we can do regarding this and how do you see the future of all this scenario where fake news is coming, where real news is also coming and as a user we are not able to distinguish between these two. If we trust on the government, government may misuse, the social networking sites are already misusing it and there is a threatening uh, different parties which are actually using us. So what, what future you see out of this? Sir? I think you have put this perfectly. That's the real dilemma. That, uh, and there are no easy answers to this. Uh, if you read the literature on Facebook, whether you should regulate or not, the survey is showing people want it. Uh, so I, it's, it's very, very difficult. The only way you can do it is to work hard to, you know, media literacy, they, it's often called. Uh, learn about the media, what they actually do, whether you, uh, you know, whether you want to trust them on this subject or that. They may be strong in one area, but weak in another. So you've got to inform yourself about the media landscape. And, uh, so first the newspapers, the, the printed press, they're also online, uh, television, news television, r radio, uh, and the uh, online media. Uh, these are, uh, you know, you've got to find out more about them. And as for what comes <laughs> through the social media and the messaging apps, I think you have to be very skeptical. That's the idea. The, the people talked this morning about uh, you know questioning, a questioning mind. Uh, Patrick French talked about it in his uh, even at the higher educa level of higher education. But uh, you got to inculcate this in our educational system at home, in public meetings, and so on. Don't just believe on you know on, take them at face value. Be skeptical. Be question everything. And I think here. Liberalism completely fails because it says that if there's a diversity of so, uh, sources of information, things will work out. The market will take care of it. Neoliberalism, and it doesn't. The you know this is a time when you know the market the market is extremely active. Market forces in the in the media ecosystem, and this is a time where uh, uh, some kind of social regulation is required. Now, what shape it should take? You define the problem. You know, a dilemma. Go this a little this way, and the government will exploit it. Go the other way, and they and uh, they, they. You know, Facebook will continue to do what it's been doing without social intervention. But it's a good thing that Facebook has taken this huge hit, billions of dollar, dollars dollars value uh, wiped out. Maybe it will recover. Uh, it's a lesson. And now, of course, they're saying. Uh, our uh, algorithms won't give you all this, uh, won't put it at the top of the list. Uh, it, it'll, it's the, our purpose is mainly to uh, bring you uh, uh, news information from your friends and people you know and so on. They're reconfiguring the algorithms. They're also employing humans to review uh, content that's going on, but this stands no chance again, uh, at all against, uh, uh, against the challenges out there, this churning, uh, ocean of information, Al uh, Alan Rusbridger talks about very hot, very polarizing, very confusing, and that's, I think, uh, uh, what you're dealing with. But be skeptical, don't believe, disbelieve first. <laughs> no, can you add social media, the credibility of news from social media is like a lot like lesser than like mainstream media. Like could you speak up a little? I could, not quite the credibility from the credibility of information that you get from social media is like a lot lesser than what you get from mainstream media, right? Because any of us can post anything on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, uh, but that's not the same case when it comes to like a newspaper. So wouldn't wouldn't you say that it would be far like mainstream media is so much more credible because a lot of us still rely on it for getting information and news. So to say that like journalism, like a lot of journalists are not like they don't put in that much work before they print something, wouldn't that be generalizing? Yeah, I think you, you are right. I think many surveys have shown the public still trust the mainstream media more than the social media as far as news is concerned. Uh, in many countries, in the United States, in the UK and so on, it's still there. but. Uh, while you have a reasonably rigorous professional, uh, you know, professional methods of checking out things or verifying, journalism is supposed to be primarily the, uh, 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 the discipline of verification. 
You try to verify first before you print anything. It doesn't happen all the time. But uh, so as you said, you can put out anything on social media. If you're aware of that in the first instance, that's a good start. Uh, but the problem is, younger people are not spending time reading serious news. There's a lot of evidence out there. I, there's a UK study I read, I read about today, uh, which showed that, I think uh, published in 2017, that shows that for a typical newspaper reader, for a, for a quality brand, a major national newspaper brand, they, they call it, uh, they spend about, a typical user in the UK spends about 40 minutes a day going through that newspaper. That's a lot, a lot of time, the whole day, per user, per day. And people who read it on...